This is a bottom-up approach. And this bottom-up approach is, I think, going to take hold. It's going to have traction. It's going to make a difference. COP is an acronym for Conference of the Parties, and they are parties to the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that was signed after the 1992 conference in Rio. And then the first major uh, conference of the parties. COP3, the Kyoto Protocol was signed. That really uh, framed the issue of climate change in terms of legally binding commitments that each country would make. The adoption of this protocol to the conference by unanimity. The approach taken in Kyoto was to put in place strict targets and timetables only for the wealthiest countries of the world. And it was very problematic. The agreement was never ratified by the United States. The Kyoto Protocol was fatally flawed in fundamental ways. Canada dropped out. We are invoking Canada's legal right to formally withdraw from Kyoto. Japan dropped out. Russia dropped out. The major shift came a few years ago in Copenhagen where President Obama, talking with um, leaders from China and from other developing countries, basically decided that it, rather than this sort of top-down, legally binding framework, a bunch of voluntary uh, bottom-up uh, commitments would be actually more effective. We're now moving into COP21, which is in Paris in December of 2015. 159 countries have submitted national plans, steps which they plan to undertake to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. In the current commitment period, 14, that's 1-4 percent, of global emissions are covered, essentially the European Union and New Zealand. Going into the Paris discussions in December 2015, fully 90 percent of global emissions are covered. What you have, you have developed and developing countries, all countries coming together and agreeing that they have to take action and undertake commitments, no matter how big or small, to deal with the effects of climate change.